this ready to go? There we go. Good evening, everybody. Good to see you here. What a beautiful day this was, huh? And uh, how many opened your windows at your house last night and uh, turned off our air and opened the windows up, man? It was beautiful. Got down to 54 last night, and uh, that's good sleeping. Not easy getting up, but good sleeping. Brother Yoder is home. There he is. You bear with him now. He's been used to where he was. It's uh, about 3 o'clock in the morning. So uh, if he's, he's, he's one who would be allowed to nod off tonight, okay? But uh, no one else is permitted. But uh, uh, glad I the Lord watched, watched over him, got him home safely. safely. And uh, yeah. I think he got, got in to his, his house, house around 2.30 this, this morning. And uh, after uh, our, uh, 36, 36 hours of different flights, flights and airports, airports and everything, and trying, trying to get home. home. So... Uh, and of course, up before that, so we had a long stretch of uh, being up, and uh, it's good to see him here tonight. Welcome home. That's great. Let's take a songbook and sing together, shall we? Turn over, if you will, 361. 361. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountains through the deep vale. Heavenly sunlight. Let's stand together to sing it. Brother Bob will lead us. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountain through the deep veil. Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee. Promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praise. around me, shadows above me, never conceal my Savior and guide. He is the light, in Him is no darkness, ever I'm walking close to His side. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah. The bright sunlight ever rejoicing pressing my way to mentions above singing his praises gladly i'm walking walking in sunlight sunlight of love heavenly sunlight heavenly sunlight flooding my soul with glory Let's pray, pray together, together, shall we? Father, Father we, we thank you for this evening. evening. Thank, thank you for another midweek service that we have to gather together. And Lord, thank you for your goodness to us throughout this week. And Lord, we're bowing before you here at the beginning of the service and ask you to use the service tonight to give us exactly what we need. Uh, Lord, you know the needs of our heart much better than we do. And you know what each and every, each single every individual here needs tonight. And God, I pray that you'd minister to them in a special way. Uh, maybe it'll be a song, maybe it'll be something that someone says to them, uh, and by way of encouragement, and Lord, maybe it'll be something through the Word of God and the study of your Word tonight, but Father, use the service in the lives of each one of us this evening. Make it exactly what you would want it to be and what you know we need it to be. And Lord, I pray we'll leave in a little bit saying it sure was good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Guide and direct in this service, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, you may be seated. Would you turn with me, please, to number 507507, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, Tune My Heart to Sing Thy Grace, 507 on that first. Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, Tune My Heart to Sing Thy Grace, Streams of Mercy Never Ceasing, Call for Songs of Loudest Praise, Teach Me Some Sung by flaming tongues of love, praise the mountain fixed upon it, 
mount of thy redeeming love. Here I reign, mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a better, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to live the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Amen. Brother JC. Tonight's letter is from the Hendricks men. Missionaries with Worldview Ministries. Dear supporting churches, I trust this letter finds you in the middle of blessings from God. He certainly has been good to Becky and I. Jesus said in Luke 11:28, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. I hold in my hand a list of 110 languages without a Bible. There is not even a Christian work in 83 of these languages. I recently heard a preacher say that the Bible was the church's chief asset and a nation without the Bible is its chief liability. Therefore, translation work should be our chief effort. Where would we in America be without the scriptures? No better than a third world country. How important is the prayer life of a missionary? Our project in the Sarakoli Tajik language under the leadership of Tim Cleghorn needs our prayers. The Cleghorns are learning three different languages, Sarakoli Tajik, Chinese, and Uyghur language. What an undertaking. The Sarakoli Tajik language does not have a written language to make it more difficult. So I've, as I have said before, translation work takes a long time, and our modern, fast-moving world doesn't want to take the time necessary to get it done. Miss Margaret Stringer, a missionary, spent 40 years among the headhunters head and cannibals and translated the New Testament into two unwritten languages. Your church would be blessed by having this dear lady in your church or missions conference. We are living in a time when missions seem to be on the back burner in many churches. Thank God that hasn't happened in your church. We love you all and covet your prayers for health and safety. Thank you for being faithful, the Hendricksmans. That's good. Get your Get prayer, prayer guide out tonight, if you will. Anybody, Anybody need one? one? Anybody, Anybody, Anybody get, get one? one? Okay. okay, that's good. good. And um, start on the, the back with the coming events and uh, be praying for all you inside. Uh, tomorrow night, we got canceled last Thursday night. Had something going on down at the prison, and they, they canceled all outside things coming in. And uh, so we didn't get to go last Thursday, so pray that all will go well tomorrow, and we'll have a good meeting down at CRC. Uh, Friday night for Reformers Unanimous right here from 7 to 9 as usual. Uh, Saturday morning they'll be out at London, and then we'll have our normal soul winning bus visitation at 10 o'clock on Saturday. And then our picnic at 4 o'clock, a little change of venue for the picnic. Uh, we... Um, uh, by, by your pastor's mistake, uh, we did not get Windsor Park. I uh, was supposed to reserve that, and I didn't. So we are going to Taylor's Park, all right? Uh, Don and Cindy Taylor's uh, home out on Hibbs Road. Uh, it's in the directory, and if you need uh, directions, well, we can get those for you. But uh, it, if you just go out Stringtown Road to, to 104, and you turn right, and you take that down, how far is it to Hibbs Road? 
two and a half miles. You'll see Hibbs Road on the left. You take a left and you go down and you see a red mailbox. And uh, when you see the red mailbox, that's the place, all right? And probably you'll see a few cars there Saturday as well. And uh, they got a, a great place in the backyard. There'll be still be volleyball and softball and there's a nice tire swing, I know, for the kids. And there's a regular swing out back and there's all kinds of things to do. It'll be a great time. So same thing. Four o'clock, come a little early if you want, and uh, we'll have everything set up, ready to go, and uh, just come have a great time together. The sign-up sheet is still down there if you want to get on that, and uh, but be there, and uh, we'll have a great time uh, Saturday at four. Starting at four, we'll go about four to eight or so uh, on Saturday for the church picnic. That'll be a delightful time. Going to be another beautiful day on Saturday as well. All right, then Sunday, don't forget, All-American Sunday. We'll have a great patriotic service Sunday morning. And uh, recognition, recognition of the states, and uh, all trying to have a roll call of the states and such. We'll salute to the armed forces and those who serve in our military and who have served in the military. And it'll be a great service. Don't miss that on Sunday morning. Invite somebody to come out with you as well for All American Sunday. Okay. Now, uh, moving up. And there's some other requests uh, right underneath the Wharton family there. If you'd write down the Kevin Burke family, B-U-R-K-E, Kevin Burke family, this family of uh, Holly Stafford. Holly is uh, Bob and Kay's daughter. Uh, she is a co-worker of hers. And um, um, Kevin, Kevin's the one who passed away, I believe. Is that right? So pray for his family. Uh, he had a heart attack and passed on. And, uh, she requested that we would pray for his family during this time, and along with that same uh, same thing, really, uh, the Atkinson family. Uh, these are friends of Julie, or acquaintances of Julie. Julie's right there. Put your hand up, Julie. That's Julie Glista, in case you want to know who Julie Glista is. There she is. And um, the mom, Teresa, passed away. Um, what does that say? Is that this morning, okay, I was trying to think if that was Thursday or Tuesday or this, okay, this a.m. this morning about 7.30, so pray for the husband and the son and the grandchildren and uh, her mom, keep the Atkinson family in prayer if you would, okay, all right, then on the inside, and uh, they did have 13 at London on Saturday with three new men in the program there, and that's a good report, uh, praise the Lord, Dr. Yoder's home safely from his trip, and uh, we're glad the Lord uh, worked that out and uh, continue to pray for Brother Moreland as he ministers there. And uh, Brother Ron has about another month or so, then he'll be home. Um, different church requests. Underneath the uh, health, um, we, uh, Diane is uh, up at Riverside. Uh, got her back from South Carolina. And uh, she uh, just really needs your prayers. Okay, there's uh, some... Pretty serious complications that she's uh, going through and uh, pray for wisdom for the doctors, know exactly how to proceed and what to do, and pray for comfort for Diane, still in quite a bit of pain and such. So uh, please keep her in your prayers, all right? It's a, it's a very serious situation. Um, and then if you'll write down Seth, S-E-T-H, I don't, uh, I put Radabaugh, you know, the Chris and Lucinda Radabaugh, the missionaries to the deaf of South Africa, this is their grandson, all right, it's uh, their daughters that, the emails he sent just says, baby Seth, baby Seth is, doesn't look to be from the pictures, I, I looked back through the emails and I never saw him say how old baby Seth was, but I'm, I'm guessing by the looks of the pictures, couldn't be more than four or five months old, and at birth, his pulmonary order, artery was not fully formed, and so now they're having, he's having open heart surgery, um, It'll be 1.30 a.m. our time in the morning, okay? And so uh, just pray for him tonight. Would you pray for this little boy? And it, I mean, that will, he'll be on a heart-lung machine while they do this procedure. It's, uh, it's, it's very, very serious. And so uh, he's requested that uh, all of us pray. And if it was your little boy or little grandson, you sure would want people praying. And so uh, let's ask God to... to take care of this little one while he gets operated on uh, early in the morning our time okay and then uh, the other health needs of course on the list uh, continue to, to pray for these uh, needs and then um, oh while I'm thinking about it Stacy I saw Stacy Anderson's name there I talked to Stacy today on the phone they have uh, uh, Stacy of course is in California she's going to remain there 
Uh, she's on dialysis now three days a week, and still, still things are really, really rough on her. Um, her son-in-law and granddaughter came back, and they've cleaned out her apartment that she had down here off Stringtown Road. She has a sofa and a chair in there that just needs to go out. Uh, do you know of anybody, or can anybody use a sofa and a chair? It's, uh, it's free. We just got to load it up, take it out, and we'll deliver it to you. Uh, you know anybody like that? Or any, if not, they said they'll just put it by the dumpster. And uh, I hate to throw something like that away. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I'll, I'll talk to him about it then. Okay. If you say something to him, have him get a hold of me, and we'll, we'll make that arrangement to uh, get that picked up. That's perfect. Good. Amen. All right. Just while I thought about that and I saw her name, I thought I'd better say that and uh, get that taken care of before I forgot. Okay? We're uh, praying for these in authority. Of course, continue to pray for our military, pray for these battling cancer, and uh, continue to pray for these on our salvation list. And, uh, of course, the unreached people groups, want to continue to ask the Lord to raise up laborers to reach these people uh, with the gospel. And then the missionaries, highlighted tonight by Brother Hendricksman, and uh, the Worldview Ministries and the different uh, translation projects that they have going on. All right? Well, let's go to prayer this evening. I'll have uh, Brother Wallace come and lead us in our prayer tonight. And uh, as he leads us audibly, pray along with him silently, would you please? And uh, we unite our hearts together and pray and uh, go through these, this list tonight. As he mentions things, you mention them to God. And uh, let's take it forward in prayer this evening. All right, Brother Bob? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to come to your throne room, and Lord, another opportunity to be in your house and use our freedoms, uh, our liberties free right now that we live in, still live in a country where we can come and worship the only true living God without uh, any harassment. But Lord, uh, we fear, fear that it's coming one day because our word, your word teaches us that it's going to get more evil. But Father, we trust you for everything. Uh, Father, as I look over this list, uh, and as I was uh, talking about a while ago with an individual that, Lord, when, you, when we look at these lists, even ours is just one church so small, but yet uh, makes me realize how much we depend on God uh, for everything. Uh, we, we, we have so many unanswered uh, thoughts that come to our minds when we read about the conditions of uh, these people who are on this list, the cancer list, and the, the people who are the missionaries that need to uh, have ailing uh, children and grandchildren that need a touch from you. Uh, Lord Stacy Anderson and Jeanette's mom, uh, Mrs. White, and and Lord, so many others. And Father, uh, we, we just need to uh, draw from your strength to be able to uh, uh, stay steadfast and, and stay, uh, uh, Lord, patient, waiting on uh, you to answer these things in a way that, Lord, we sometimes don't all, always understand. We, a lot of times, most of the time, we don't understand it. But Lord, we walk by faith and trust you that you'll take care of every need of every missionary family on this list, every need of, that is a health issue on this list, uh, the financial situations, and, and uh, Lord, the uh, uh, Hendricksmans, and, and uh, Lord, what he talked about, and, and about the word not being in so many languages, Lord, it, the thought just overwhelms my mind, and uh, Father, I just trust you, and Lord, we want to be a part of that work here. We want, we desire, always uh, help us to desire to be a part of that work and uh, to uh, uh, put all that we can into uh, getting the word out and, Lord, uh, just uh, doing your will. Lord, I do thank you for our pastor and how you've uh, helped him to lead our church and 
And Lord, how you've uh, allowed it to grow. I thank you for each and every member of our church, each and every family of our church. And Lord, I just uh, give you all the thanks and praise for everything that you've done. Lord, I thank you for the RU ministry, the doors that you've opened up there. And as the CRC in London and hopefully in a couple months in Madison. And Father, uh, we, uh, we just pray that you'll uh, open up just uh, touch hearts to become involved in that ministry. And Lord, just uh, uh, do the work which needs to be done and, and watch you work in these people's lives. And, and Lord, only you can do it. And uh, Father, I just pray that you'll touch hearts to uh, uh, seek out our pastor or Brother Reed and, and to offer their self uh, uh, to uh, get into this ministry. And Father, I... Uh, do pray for this little child, Seth. Lord, I lift him up to you. Lord, uh, uh, I want to see a miracle. Our church wants to see a miracle. But, uh, Father, that's totally up to you. But I guarantee you one thing. If, it's, if it comes out and it's a miracle and you, you bring this child through this, we will stand up and we'll give you all the glory and all the honor for it because you're the only one that deserves it. Father, we trust you and we love you. And Father, as our pastor comes, and Lord, to open up your precious word, I do not want to miss uh, giving thanks to you for uh, Brother Yoder's safe return, and Father, the uh, great blessing you gave him over there, and uh, I'm sure one day we'll hear a report on, on what went on, but Father, just to get him home safe, and uh, Lord, I just uh, thank you for that. And Father, uh, I just pray that your hand will be upon our pastor as he opens up your word tonight. And Lord, I pray that every heart will be attentive to what is being taught. May the Holy Spirit work in every, each and every one of our hearts. And Lord, we'll give you all the thanks and praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One hundred and eighty in your hymnal, one eight zero. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Would you stand with me as we sing one eight zero together on that first? Be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. Let's greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing those last stanzas together.
God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. On that third, let's sing that together. All you may need, he will provide. God will take care of you. Let's sing that third all together. All you may need, he will provide. God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day. God will take care of you. Let's sing that last all together. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast, God will take care of you. You can be seated. One thing, uh, two while the ushers are coming about the picnic on Saturday, it would be good to bring a chair with you if you can. And uh, some of you have those, you know, chairs that fold out and such. Uh, it'll help with the seating. And uh, so uh, some of you, before you got saved, went to some of those BYOB parties. Well, this is BYOC, bring your own chair party, amen. And uh, Bring it with you on Saturday, okay? All right. Let's pray and we'll ask God's blessing uh, on our offering this evening, okay? Brother McKeon. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the weather that you've uh, provided. Lord, uh, take the gifts that you just given tonight and uh, help it to be uh, a blessing and uh, an encouragement. Lord, uh, bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. All right, take your Bible this evening if you would. Matthew 18, please. Matthew chapter 18.
Matthew 18, notice with me, if you will, verse number 21, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him till seven times? And Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and his children, and all that he had, in payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out, and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet, and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were sorry, and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Father, add your blessing here to the reading of this portion of Scripture tonight, and Lord, I pray that you will open our hearts tonight and that you will help us to glean the truths tonight that we ought to glean and we need to glean from this teaching tonight by the Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that you'd help each one of us to search our hearts, and better yet, Lord, we ask that you would search our heart and that you would point out any area and any person, any, anything that needs to be forgiven that we'll follow your command and we'll follow the admonition of Scripture and we'll understand what this forgiveness is all about. So bless our study this evening. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. How often do I have to forgive? That's what Peter was asking. When Peter asked the question earlier in verse 21, how often or how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Seven times? Uh, that, that was, was that, that was, was over, over and above, above what, what normally the law stated. Most, most of the, the even the Pharisees said three, three times, and after you forgive three times, times it's over, over buddy. Uh, then, then I can I let, let you have it, it all right? right? And uh, and, and you had the law on your side, and so he knew enough that it would be higher than three, but he thought surely seven. That's going more than double the amount. That should be good. After all, the Lord said, if somebody asked you to go one mile, you should go. Two miles, all right? Go, go join with him. If, if he asks you a, a coat, give him your cloak also. So he knew that it was kind of double, so he figured, well, I'll, I'll double three and I'll go more than six. I'll go seven. After all, the Lord likes seven. I think that's a good number. And then he asked for seven. And the Lord said, no, not seven, but 70 times seven. And, and of course, we know he doesn't mean for you to get a pen and a paper out or notch it in the wall somewhere how many times that, you know, you, you've been wrong and you keep track till you get up to 490 times and you say, ah, that's it. You crossed the line. That isn't what he meant, all right? Many of the battles we fight, listen, many of the sins that we commit or the sins that Christians struggle with, they stem from one sin. And that is the sin of unforgiveness. Wrath, anger, bitterness, rebellion, depression, discouragement, at the root of those sins is unforgiveness. In fact, hold your finger there, Matthew 18. Put a little marker there if you need to. And look back at Ephesians 4 with me, will you please? Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4, and let's go to the end of the chapter. Familiar verses, but I, wanna, I want you to look at them. Verses 31 and 32. 
Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. You're familiar with them. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Okay? Now, I want you to look at that verse, those verses, not in the order we just read them, but look at it in reverse order. Will we do that? Let's say that we're not, we're, we're not forgiving as God forgives us. We don't forgive each other. We're not tenderhearted. We're not kind. Then what are we going to end up having? Malice, evil speaking, clamor, anger, wrath, bitterness. We can get all that put away if we're kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. If we don't practice verse 32, verse 31 will be in play, okay? And so that's the root of it. So Jesus is teaching the disciples something very important about forgiveness, and I hope he'll teach us as well. Now, let me, let me say, forgiveness is more than saying I'm sorry, and I'll say more about this a little bit. It's not just two, like, like two kids apologizing. You know, two kids would fight, and you put them together. All right, now, Billy, you say you're sorry, and, you know, Donna, you say you're sorry, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, good. good. Now, now hug, hug each other. other. All, All right, right, good. Now everything's okay. Hmm? You know what? Everything isn't okay. Uh, you just made them say some words, but it had nothing to do with their heart. Amen? And uh, some of you know that because you were that Johnny and you were that Billy one day. And uh, you, you said the words, but you didn't forgive them at all. There's a... Uh, uh, one, one, one man described forgiveness as this. He said, many people use the term forgiveness very loosely, and they mean different things. It is more than just relinquishing our judgment to God or simply accepting the hurt and letting it pass. True forgiveness occurs, listen carefully now, when those cold emotions of unforgiveness are changed to warm, loving, compassionate, caring emotions resulting from a heartfelt transformation. God changes your heart. That's where the word tenderhearted comes in. Forgiveness is both an act and it's a process. Forgiveness is both an act and it's a process. Forgiveness is not the same as reconciliation. Forgiveness is not the same as reconciliation. Same as reconciliation. To reconcile, it takes two. To forgive, it only takes one. Now, let's go through some principles of forgiveness back in Matthew chapter 18. And while you're going back to chapter 18, uh, go ahead and pass that for just a little bit and look at Matthew 6 with me, will you? Matthew chapter 6, which is the, the Sermon on the Mount. Number one, the principles of forgiveness. The first principle of forgiveness is this. If I do not forgive others, God will not forgive me. If I do not forgive others, God will not forgive me. You say, are you sure about that? Well, let's see what the, God, what the Bible says. Look at Matthew 6, and verse 12 is part of, of course, what we call the Lord's Prayer, or the model prayer, really, more aptly. It says, verse 12, Jesus says, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And you know, you know the, whole, the whole model prayer there, the Lord's Prayer, as it's called. And he says, Amen. And then Jesus repeats one part, he expounds on one part of that prayer, and maybe it's because he knew that's the part the disciples would have trouble with. Okay? Because verse 14 says what? If you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So he reiterates and, and, and uh, gives for us the, the principle of how important forgiveness is. I don't know about you, but I cannot afford to go a day without God forgiving me. Maybe you can live perfect. Maybe you went all day today and didn't sin. Never, never thought something you shouldn't have thought or did something you shouldn't have did or said something you shouldn't have said. But we all need forgiveness from God every day. God says, if I am not willing to forgive someone else, then he won't forgive my trespasses. Now let's go back to Matthew 18 and the 
story Jesus told to answer Peter's question about how often do I have to forgive my brother. The story he tells about a servant who is forgiven for 10,000 talents and then he wouldn't forgive a friend of his who owed him 100 pence. Okay? Now you have to understand something. A talent was the highest currency in the economy at that time. Okay? And 10,000 was the highest number they had in first century arithmetic. So it was the highest number of the highest currency. I don't know what you would relate that to in our day, but let's just, just for the sake of argument, we could say it was a, a trillion dollars. If it was a hundred million dollars, how many of you think you could ever pay a debt if they said, all you owe us is a hundred million? Now let's set up some monthly payments. How many would say, that's a waste of time, huh? There's no way you'd ever pay that back. There's no way you'd ever pay. It was such, it's such a tremendously huge debt, and it was in that day as well. There's no possible way to ever pay it back. And of course, this is, it, it is, it is a picture of the debt we owe to God. Then it, he asked for patience to pay back the money. And of course, the king has compassion on him and frankly just forgave him of the debt through mercy and, and he just forgives him. And by the way, how would you feel? <laughs> wow. That would be wonderful. You'd be very liberated. But then he goes out and he gets a guy who owes him 100 pence. Now, it takes, remember, 10,000 talents, it takes 6,000 pence to make one talent. This guy owed him 100 pence. Literally a pittance in our, in our terminology. I mean, a pence would be about a day's wage. It's similar to the penny a day. Remember when he went to work in the vineyard and he paid all the guys a penny for working, even some who came in the last hour? And, uh, they, they, but everybody who worked that day got a penny. That was usually a day's wage. So he may have, ate, he may have owed like 100 days wage, which, which, by the way, would be able to be paid off. If you think about uh, about three months' worth of your salary, if you had that in debt, you, you'd, you'd have to work, but you could pay that off, and you could take care of it. And yet, they, uh, nothing compared to, you know, 100 million, but he strangles the guy, takes him by the throat, and wouldn't have any mercy, wouldn't have any compassion, wouldn't have any, even think about forgiving him, even though he's just been relieved of this great debt. And the lesson the Lord's teaching again is from Matthew 6. You, you were to forgive our debtors as he has forgiven our debts. So we find out the very, the very first thing that, that we see, if we don't forgive others, God's not going to forgive us. And, and then let's ask ourselves a question. Why is it so difficult for us to forgive? I mean, listen, I'm talking to every person in this room at some time in your life probably, you've struggled with forgiving somebody. Something they did to you, something they said to you, something that happened to you, and you struggle with forgiving. You know God has forgiven you, know what God has done for you, and yet we struggle forgiving somebody else. And here's why, number two. Because we see ourselves, we must see ourselves as a 10,000 talent sinner. The problem is, we see ourselves as the 100 pence sinner and everybody else as the 10,000 talent sinners. I'm not as bad as they are. I'm not as, I don't do that stuff. We, we, we tend to categorize sins. We put labels on sins. Oh, I can, I can be greedy or I can gossip or I can uh, lust or I can, I can uh, uh, have pride. 
but I'm not a drug addict like those people on Fridays. I'm not an alcoholic like those people that are you. See, we categorize our sin, and, and i got news for you. God doesn't categorize sins. God, does, God doesn't have, but we say, well, it was just a little white lie. There's no white lie. There's no black lie. They're all just dirty, rotten, filthy, black, stinking lies. It's sin in the sight of God. God doesn't categorize those sins as some are, some are not so bad and some are really bad. God doesn't do that. We have levels of sin, but God just says sin is sin in the eyes of God. The sin that we so easily see in others, God so easily sees in us. The sin that we so easily see in others, God will so easily see in us. And we forget so easily our great sins against God, but we so easily remember other people's small sins toward us. But God's forgiveness of me and God's forgiveness of my sin is so great and it's so extensive it covers my forgiveness of others also. Extending, listen, extending true forgiveness to somebody else or to others is clear and persuasive evidence that I've been forgiven by God. Now let me give you principle number three. It is not just the sin that matters, but the status of the one sinned against. It is not just the sin that matters, but the status of the one sinned against. As I said earlier, we're all 10,000 talent sinners. We're all $100 million sinners. Sin is black and sin is wicked and sin is evil because it rejects God who is holy, God who is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. He loved us and He gave Himself for us. It's only when we begin to realize the, the hugeness and the magnitude of our sin against God, that we'll be able to forgive other sins against us. You know what's great? God gives unlimited forgiveness to us. God gives unlimited forgiveness to us. God God doesn't keep score. When you go to God, and and don't raise your hand, but I'm sure you you probably all could raise your hand. You probably, if I ask you to raise your hand, how many of you have confessed to God a sin that you've done more than one time? I mean, same thing. And you feel kind of guilty going to God and asking for forgiveness again. God, God's forgiveness is unlimited. Because when God forgives, by the way, when God forgives, He doesn't forget. We say, well, you've got to forgive and forget. That's not in the Bible. You say, well, God does remember our sins. You're exactly right. But it doesn't say He forgets them. He says, your sins and your iniquities will I remember no more. I will not remember them. As an act of my will, I'm choosing not to remember those sins anymore. That's quite different than forgetting. Everybody here has forgotten something. Forgot where you put something. Forgot where you uh, talked to somebody the other day. They said they had to sit down in Walmart because they were in there and didn't remember why they, they couldn't remember why they went there. I got a cure for that. Don't ever go there. But uh, that's not going to work. But, you know, we, we all forget things. We don't remember, but God, God does so it doesn't just forget. God doesn't just forget. He, on purpose, by an act of His will, chooses not to remember 
those sins anymore against us. He won't do that. That's forgiveness. And that's unlimited. And that's why you can come to God and you can say, well, Lord, I did it again. And honestly, God can say, did what again? You did that before? It's gone. Then let me ask you a question. If we enjoy the unlimited forgiveness from God, how can we limit our forgiveness to others? How can we limit our forgiveness to others? Who do you need, Pete? Pete, who do you need? Lisa, they need you in the nursery. Okay? Thank you. So we don't want to limit. So that brings us to number four. Forgiveness is costly. Forgiveness is costly. Don't miss this. Now listen, there's three keys to true forgiveness. Number one is repentance. Okay? That's on the part of the one who sinned. You say, is it sorrow? Yeah, it's sorrow, but it's not only sorrow. It has to be more than sorrow. Why would God rather have us say, forgive me, than have us say, I'm sorry? Think about that for a second. You know why? I'm sorry doesn't call for any kind of a response. Let's say I drove into the parking lot tonight and, and I... As I drive in and I go to park, I just uh, uh, scrape up the side of Bob Wallace's car. I come in and say, Bob, I scraped up the side of your car. Sorry. What's he supposed to say? Huh? He may not say anything. I better duck. I don't know, but... Uh, Bob, nothing. I better duck if Kay finds out about it. Huh? In fact, he really doesn't have to respond to that. In other words, I simply told him I'm sorry, and he doesn't have to say anything. He may just stare at me. He doesn't have to say anything. But what if I drove in the parking lot, did the same thing, and I came into Bob and said, Bob, come in the parking lot, I scraped the side of your car. Will you forgive me? Now, I've got to have a response. Now, he's got to say something. Really, saying I'm sorry, that's the easy way out. You see, when I ask for forgiveness, when you ask for forgiveness, you know what you're doing? You're, you're risking the fact you may get an answer you don't like or an answer you don't want to hear. What's the worst answer you could expect if you ask somebody to forgive you? No. No. But see, when I ask for forgiveness, that exposes me to being humbled and possibly rejected. And we don't like that. Our pride doesn't like that. So what would you rather do? We'd rather avoid it altogether and just say sorry. Because it's so much easier to say that than, will you forgive me? I would not teach my children to just say, tell them you're sorry. I'd teach my children to say, ask them to forgive you. Boy, those words just get stuck in the throat a little bit. Okay? That's humbling. But God doesn't just want us to come and say, I'm sorry. In Corinthians, when he talked about the person who they were dealing with for immorality in the church. He said he sorrowed, but he sorrowed unto repentance. Godly sorrow will work repentance. Sorrow isn't repentance, but it leads you, it brings you to a repentance. And a repentance is a change of your mind about what you've done. 
And it is where you change your mind and you agree with God about what you've done. When you confess your sin, that word there means to agree with God or to say the same thing as God does about your sin. Am I saying the same thing as God about my sin? Or do I think it's really not that bad? The reason we think we don't, we're really not that bad of sinners in the sight of God is because we have a different view of our sin than God does. We have to say the same thing about our sin. When we say the same thing about our sin as God, we're ready to repent. Turn away from that sin. The second thing that's necessary to true forgiveness is mercy. Now, this comes from the one who was sinned against. Mercy. What is mercy? Not receiving what we deserve. Not receiving what we deserve. So in mercy, the, the, the man who owed the 10,000, the, the king released him. In fact, the bank the Bible says he loosed him, forgave him of the debt. He didn't punish him for the sin. He didn't punish him for his offense. The other man was very unforgiving. The other man was very unmerciful. He grabbed him by the throat and said, Pay me what thou owest. By the way, he wasn't wrong to say, Pay me what you owe me. But he wasn't merciful. He didn't extend any mercy like he had been extended mercy. Let me ask you a question. Why does God forgive our sin? Because He's merciful. Say, do we deserve it? No, we don't. But He's merciful to us. He doesn't give us what we deserve. Thank God for that. Listen carefully. Don't let what has been done to you become bigger than what Christ has done for you. Did you get that? Don't let what has been done to you become bigger than what Christ has done for you. Now let me give you number three, and this is important. Number three is absorption. Absorption. What does that mean? It means you absorb the cost of that sin that's been committed. Every time someone sinned against you, Someone has committed a trespass against you. You have to decide. And by the way, it hurts. It's painful. But you'll have to decide, will the pain stop with me? Or will I pass that on to somebody else? Or will I return it to the person who gave me the pain? Jesus, when He died on the cross, took our sins. Pain, agony, torment, bloodshed, anguish. Why? He was absorbing the cost of our sin. It was painful. But he didn't pass the pain on. That was God in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself. Not, listen, He bore the pain, He absorbed the anguish, He absorbed the suffering, He absorbed all that. And He looked and said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He wouldn't pass it on. Now, that's not natural. So what's the natural response? Pay me what you owe me. I don't get mad, I'll get even. That's the natural response. Well, I'll forgive, but I'm not forgetting. What it means is, huh, he'll get his one day. We're planning on returning the pain someday. 
if you don't absorb the cost and you continue to hold that against somebody else, it becomes a root of bitterness in your life. You read Hebrews 12 and verse 15 about a... In fact, look there with me, will you? Uh, we, we talked about the bitterness from Ephesians 4 and what happens if you don't forgive. Look at Hebrews 12 with me, would you please? Are you okay? Hebrews 12. Look at verse number 12. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. But let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up Trouble others. No, trouble who? You. And thereby many be defiled. That root of bitterness will spring up. You know what it is? It makes you a very troubled person. And who does it affect? <laughs> other people. You defile other people with your root of bitterness. Yes, well, Pastor, how do I know if I've not forgiven somebody? Listen carefully. You don't want to be in the same room with them. The mere mention of their name makes you cringe. If you hear something that has hurt them or made them uncomfortable, that has been a, what we would view as something bad, you're not really sad about it. In fact, you feel pretty good about it. You think they've finally gotten a little bit of what they deserve. One of the chief marks you've not forgiven somebody is that when you do talk about them, you tend to replay your story of what they did to you or how they hurt you. Why do, why do people do that? You know why they do? Because they want you to dislike them as much as they do. That root of bitterness springing up and thereby many be defiled. Absorption. Now let me quickly say this, number five. The only way you absorb it, the only way you absorb the cost is by the grace of God. It's the only way you absorb the cost. Say, man, I only got like taking the pain and holding it myself. No, no, no. You need the grace of God to do that. Grace is God's sufficiency to meet my need. God's sufficiency to meet my need. It's only, listen, be kind one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. I've got to forgive like God forgives. I can't do that without the grace of God. If God doesn't help me to do that, I can't do that. Neither can you. That's why He offers us His grace. What's grace? Mercy was us not getting what we deserve. What's grace? God giving us what we don't deserve. And that is His power, His sufficiency, His ability to do what He asks us to do. You don't, you don't do it by just gritting your teeth. And by, by okay, I've got to try harder. No, 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 you do it by asking God. I need you. I can't do this. Help me. It's His grace that gives you the, the ability to do that. How did Christ take on flesh, live on the earth, go to the cross, pay the price for sin, endure the pain, absorb our sins, release us from the punishment? How did He do that? 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be made rich. How did Jesus do that? He did it by the grace of God. Jesus Christ lived his life on earth, and, and he died, he died that. He, he, he lived his life as a spirit-filled man. We could not be asked, he could not say, follow his steps or follow my example if he did everything he did as God. Because what would we say? I'm not God. No, but we can be a spirit-filled man or woman. It takes the grace of God to do that. I have found His grace is all complete. He supplieth every need, except the need to be able to forgive somebody. Except the need to be able to bear the pain. Well, I just don't know how much more I can take. That's what your people say. Well, I think that's where 1 Peter 5, 7 says, casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Why are you caring Him? Give it to the Lord. Give it to Him. His grace will help you. Most of the time, when you see somebody who's frustrated, angry, bitter person, and you find out that not many people like them, not many people get close to them, they kind of keep everybody at an arm's distance because of their disposition, here's the problem. They have unforgiveness somewhere. They've never forgiven. And it's become a root of bitterness. If you can, if you can break through that and, and their verbal assaults and their verbal insults and the things they'll say, if you can just break through that and you get to them and say, who hurt you? What happened? You'll find that sometimes they melt and tears come to their eyes. And you can find out what the root of the problem is. They just need to forgive. Absorb the pain. Absorption. Number six, let, let's go to that. The sixth principle of forgiveness to remember is this. Forgiven sinners forgive sin. Forgiven sinners forgive sin. You see, the answer to Peter's question in verses 15 through 20 is answered in verses 21 through 35. That's how, hey, that's how sinners, that's how saints, that's how church members, that's how we relate to each other in church. You know how? By forgiving each other. Being kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. Forgiveness originated by God the Father demonstrated by God the Son and commanded by the Holy Scripture. To forgive others, we have to see how great and how grievous our sin was to God. Now the question tonight will be, will you throw away your justifications? Will you throw away your excuses? Will you, will you get rid of your explanations? And will you decide, I'm going to forgive? I don't, know, I don't know who it is, but as we went through this lesson tonight and looked at these scriptures and talked about forgiveness, somebody... You saw their picture right in your head. You thought about a name. You thought about someone. Will you practice forgiveness? Can I tell you? It transforms you. It transforms you. Let's easily, listen, we ought to easily and readily forgive one another. Why? Why? Because we've been forgiven. 
of a greater debt than anybody could ever commit against us. Lastly, I like this quote. Someone wrote, I did not see, did not see it attributed to anybody, but here's what it said. We are most like beasts when we kill. We are most like men when we judge. But we are most like God when we forgive. Be therefore kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Let's stand for prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we bow before you in prayer tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the, your teaching here and Matthew on forgiveness. We thank you, Lord, for the mercy and that you extended to us in forgiving us of our sin. And I pray that you would give us the grace we need to forgive others when they trespass against us. Oh, help us to see how vital and how important this doctrine of forgiveness is. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I wonder how many folks tonight, before I close in prayer, would just say, Pastor, God brought somebody to my attention during that lesson tonight that I need to forgive. My friend, the one that it saves is you. The one it will release will be you. You won't let that root of bitterness begin to grow and spring up. It will transform your life. I wonder if there's people here tonight that say, Pastor, God brought some to my mind and I'm going to deal with that and I'm going to forgive. Pastor, pray for me tonight. Will you put your hand up? Yes. Amen. Amen. That's good. You may put them down. Father, I pray you'll help the ones whose hands were lifted and maybe some who should have and didn't. I pray, Lord, you'd help each of us to see just how much you forgave us for and how certainly we can forgive others of their hundred pence. Help us, Lord, to always be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven us. We love you. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace towards us. I pray now, Lord, you'll dismiss us with your care and make us mindful that you go with us from this place. And I pray, Lord, over the next several days with the RU on Thursday and Friday and a Saturday morning and our visitation and soul winning and then the picnic and then All-American Sunday. If you tarry, you're coming, Lord. Take us through these days. And, Lord, I pray that we'd please you in all that we say and do and that we would point others to Christ. Give us souls to be saved, Lord, in this place. And we'll thank you for it. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm pressing on the upward way. Let's see what we get. this. Good, good, okay. I, I want to check on uh, Cheryl Polabel. She mentioned in Sunday school that she had a procedure done and uh, everything went well. She's feeling better. They just have to watch her for a few days, all right? And uh, so keep praying for Cheryl, okay? And uh, she'll heal up real good from her procedure she had. All right, let's sing together, shall we? I'm pressing on the upward way. Here we go. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I'm onward bound, Lord plant my feet on higher ground, Lord lift me up and let me stand, by faith on heaven's stable land, a higher plane than I have found, Lord plant my feet on higher ground. God bless you. You are dismissed. Choir, come right on.